Hey guys, what's up? This is Frank from MPG Unlimited, and today I have a Raw Zarek Stasis Legacy deck tech for you guys. And this deck is sort of a casual, fun deck to play in Legacy. It's not really a competitive deck. It's actually fairly cheap for Legacy decks. It's about $400, which for Legacy, as most of you will know, is very cheap. A lot of Legacy decks are well over $1,500, two grand, uh, that sort of thing. So, this deck... Um, its main function is to get stasis out in combination with Raul Zarek so that you can untap one land each turn and uh, continue to tap for stasis and keep stasis out um, since you don't have an untap step. And it plays both of those cards as a 4 of since they're essential combo pieces. And this deck, it kind of stalls out the game. It makes it so your opponent can't really do anything. And it lets you... Uh, get out your win condition eventually, which I'll talk about right now, actually, is Ebony Owl Natsuke. And it's an artifact that at your opponent's upkeep, if they have seven or more cards in their hand, they lose four life. So they're almost always going to have seven, seven cards in their hand because they're going to be drawing extra cards due to Howling Mine uh, that we play. So they're drawing at least one additional card at their draw step each turn. And they can't really play anything since all their lands tapped and they don't really have um, any methods of getting cards on the field so there's not really a ton that they can do and once you get that out it's just five quick turns and then their life is completely deteriorated you can also use Rawls minus two in order to deal three damage to your opponent as well if you need to and this deck also plays quite a few counter spells as well like Impulse, Daze, Spell Pierce, Spell Snare, Force of Will, um, everything like that. Or, sorry, not Impulse, but all those counter spells just help make sure that you do get Stasis and Rawl both onto the battlefield. And it basically just ensures that also your opponent can't take care of them later in the game. And that they're not playing things that will help them beat you. And it's pretty pretty obvious why those are in here and then I'm also playing brainstorm and impulse in order to help dig for cards that you need either if it's raw Zarek or stasis or ebony owl Natsuke, something like that um and then I'm also playing frozen aether I thought this was a really interesting card I added it in later and basically you play it um either before you play stasis or after depending on how much mana you have available to you and it's a 4-drop, and it makes it so artifacts, lands, and creatures that your opponents control enter in tapped. So even if they get lands later in the game, they all come in tapped, and they never get to untap them because they don't have an untap step due to stasis. So I think this card works really well in this deck because even later in the game, they can't do anything still. And this just m ensures that if they have a big creature out, that they can't swing with it multiple times, and... It's really, I think, very vital to the deck, actually. And then, I've already talked about Howling Mine. Uh, just letting your opponent, and also yourself, draw extra cards to help dig for things that you need and keep your op opponent's hand size uh, up to maximum hand size. And then, the mana base is pretty straightforward. It plays 11 Islands, uh, 4 Steam Vents, 4 Sulphur Falls, or sorry, uh, I think, yeah, 4 of each of those, I believe. And it plays three Forbidden Cities, which Forbidden City is also nice because it taps for any color, and you can untap it by exiling a card from your hand. And generally, due to all the draw methods that I have in this deck, uh, we will have enough cards in our hand if we need to discard that, or exile it for that card. And so, the, this deck overall, as I've said, it's... I'd like to emphasize, it's more of a fun, casual deck to play. You're you're not going to want to bring this to, like, a Grand Prix or something like that. And I I like playing it against my friends. I they, they obviously really hate it. And I think it's a pretty good deck, actually, for what it is. It's pretty cheap, actually, other than the Force of Wills and um, some, some of the cards in the mana base. But it's generally pr a pretty cheap deck, and I really like it. So if you have any suggestions for the deck, uh, please just comment below. And if you haven't already, just like or subscribe. Uh, tell your friends about my channel. Thanks for all the support, guys.